nice dry place out of the sun is important when you own a milk cow. This barn is equipped with a stanchion and a pen to separate the calf at night. Let's build it. To start this build off, we needed to fix some drainage issues. So we dug a big trench to run drain pipe later on. We had some old electrical poles sitting along the fence and I thought there's no better way to put these to use than a milk barn. Setting these posts was a bit of a challenge by myself, but with a little tinkering, I found a good method for getting them in the hole. That went pretty good. It's standing. Obviously it needs to be, you know, it needs to be leveled and, and all that good stuff, but it's in the hole, so. <laughs> So we've got all of our posts in. It's a windy day today, so I'm kind of fighting these posts to keep them up, but they're all pretty darn level on both sides. So I'm hoping we don't have any issues when we start building and connecting all these posts together and building the roof. Now we gotta start putting our boards that go across on both sides. And that's gonna be the fun part because I gotta cut all of these posts to the right height and then we gotta notch them out a little bit. So let's get to it. These poles still had the grounding wires connected to them. Because we are so far from the house, we don't have any power nearby, so we pulled out our Opus power station, which has no problem running our table saw or any other tools we used on this project. They even make portable size power stations that are great for using on the road. I'll leave a link below in the description for their website, as well as a 10% off discount code on your purchase of an Opus power station. I ripped some boards down to be our battens under the metal roofing, I secured them every 24 inches, and then installed the roofing.
we got a roof all screwed in minus the last one we're gonna have to come back later and finish off this last panel i guess i miscalculated Hopefully by now you're starting to understand what exactly this building is going to look like. Half of this building is going to be a milking barn, a little milking parlor area with a milking stanchion and whatnot so I can bring Rosie in. And this right here is dual function, gives the cows shade in the summertime when it's really hot and they can get out of the weather if it's really cold. But it's also a pen where I can put the calf to separate Rosie and him if I need to, if for some reason we're not getting enough milk. Right now we're doing fine. We're still getting about two to two and a half gallons a day with calf sharing. But if I need to, I'll separate the calf at night and we'll get even more. For the portion of this barn that we're actually going to be siding and closing in, which is our milking area, we're going to be using some rough cut lumber. This is true one by six inch uh, hemlock boards. It's kind of what you would use on like a tobacco barn. I really like that look. We have another barn right there that has that look as well. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be using our Opus power bank and our air compressor. We're going to be nailing those boards on. the look of that wood siding it looks so nice this is the part of the project that i enjoy the most because you start to see the finished product and you can see what we've got going on here so we've got our milking area where i'll be milking rosie and we'll probably store some stuff like brushes and iodine and stuff like that that you might need and then over here they have their little pen where they can get out of the weather it protects us from the sun pretty well the sun usually kind of goes this way so I was finally able to backfill our drain pipe. We ran a four inch drain pipe all the way down that trench. So that way there used to be like a little ravine here where the runoff would go and I didn't want to get too muddy and then, you know, driving the tractor over and whatnot. So it's really close to our milking barn. I wanted to make sure it was nice and dry. So we got it pretty well covered. We're going to have to bring in more dirt because there wasn't a whole lot of dirt to begin with. But now we need to start working on this stanchion. That is the only thing that I need to do to get the cows out here into this field because we're milking Rosie every day. I needed a nice dry area where I can milk her out of the weather. And so I just kind of come in here and scrape some of this and uh, 
get it flattened out a little bit. We've been waiting for this to be finished so that way we can actually move Rosie out because we have to milk her every single day and we didn't really want to milk in the field just in case it was raining and power issues, things like that. So now we're going to go ahead and move them out into the field and we're going to finally start our spring, summer grazing periods. <sighs> yep. It is a cold but beautiful day today and we get to go milk Rosie and put this barn to use for the first time. Oh, it's nice to have this thing. We were worried that the little guy was gonna go jump through the fence, which he did a couple times, but we got the fence on and they ended up touching their nose to it, so he figured it out pretty quick. Rosie and Buddy already know what the electric fence is, but they've just been chowing down, I'm sure, overnight. Well, enough chit chat, let's get Rosie in here. First time using the milk stanchion. And from those posts I cut off the top, I got myself a little seat. It's pretty nice, huh? Look at that. And today we're gonna be using our, our Opus Power Station again. Uh, I've been loving using this thing lately, so I'm gonna use it today to milk Rosie because we're so far from power. I think eventually we're gonna make a little gorilla cart or something that we can have this powered and the milker as well all at the same time, but this thing's pretty neat. We just power it on, plug her in. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah. Let's go get Rosie. Hey buddy. Hey Rosie. Hey there, Rosie. Hey there, girl. Oh, you're so good at it. Come on, Rosie. Come on, Rosie. Rosie's so good on the halter. Come on, Rosie. Come here, Rosie. Come on. Up you go. Come on, Rosie. I know it's a little different. Come on. Up you go. It looks the same, but... Different location. Up you go. At the end of the road is a treat for you. Oh, there you go. There you go, Rosie. Oh, and you pooped right off the bat, huh? Thank you. Thank you for that. It's a nice little treat for me, huh? Let's get Rosie all cleaned off. She should be pretty clean being in the field. Now Buddy gets to come and watch. <laughs> there you go, Rosie. Now you're settling in. You can come watch from over there, bud. I can't wait. I'm so excited to get to use this milk barn. It's nice to be kind of outside and be more in nature a little bit and do it instead of being in such a big barn that gets a little dusty. So this will have a little bit more air coming through, which I like quite a bit. All righty, Rosie, you ready? Gotta put the two back teats on first.
Oh, almost got it in the poop. There you go, Roji. There you go. Buddy's just keeping her company right there. I'm pretty certain Buddy buddy there, our bull, our Angus bull, has already bred Rosie because I haven't seen him try to mount her in quite a few weeks. So we were trying to separate them till June or July because we wanted to have a calf on grass in the spring next year, but he ended up breaking through the pen and getting to her. So we're probably having another, another February calf because of that guy. She doesn't even want the alfalfa. She's probably so full. But thank you, lady. Thank you, lady. If you've never seen a milk machine before, these there's little teat cups here, and you can probably hear the. That's a little pulsator, which pulsates and basically creates the same thing as if you were having a teat. Oh. Yep. It's not a clean job, that's for sure. So anyway. That pulsates to act just like you would be, you know, milking her by hand or the calf. And uh, it's got a little tube that sucks the milk down in and into the bucket, basically. There's the little motor and a compression and a little mini compressor. And then, of course, our Opus power generator that we're using right now. So. Ah, you got pee all over the place, Rosie. Right now, she's not giving a whole lot of milk. Kind of been going down a little bit, and I think that's because the little guy's getting older and he's drinking a lot more, but we're, we're still getting about a gallon and a half not separating the calf, so uh, that's pretty good. I might start separating him here soon, and we need to halter train him anyway in this pen back behind me, so it'd be good practice for him. All right, she's all done. Oh, thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. Go, buddy. Go, buddy. Back it up. Come on, Rosie. Back it up. There you go. There you go, Rosie. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Thank you, lady. Hey, buddy. Ah, oh, yes. This is the reality of farming right here. Hey, we broke in the milking stanchion. Broke in the milking barn. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun building this milking barn. It honestly didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would. I got to repurpose some old electrical poles that were sitting over in a corner on our farm. And yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. And we got to break it in this morning, so I'm happy with it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.